Good day, my name is Blue Suit and today I'll be going over my review of the 2D epic action adventure Souls Light RPG known as Tales of Iron. In Tales of Iron you play as Reggie, Prince of the Rat Kingdom and smallest of King Rattus' four sons. The story begins in the days leading up to the Great Rat Massacre as you battle your eldest brother Dennis for the throne, only to have your victory and subsequent crowning halted by an invasion from the Frog Clan who ransack your kingdom and slay your people, sending Reggie down a path of vengeance, truth, and bug juice. The overall story in Tales of Iron begins as a simple revenge story that develops slowly into a surprisingly engaging and interesting story as the game's second act is just as much about discovering the dark truths about the Rat Kingdom as it is about exacting your revenge, but even more so is in how well that story is told. For starters, the world is very detailed with great animations and sound. The sprawling map is segmented into large two-dimensional chunks, but every go feels unique. And there's always something interesting to look at as every scene is thoughtfully filled to the brim with NPCs and items of Tales of Iron's gothic cell shaded art style. To top it all off, while none of the characters are truly voice acted, the entire game is, however, wonderfully narrated by Doug Cockle, who you may know as Geralt of Rivia. More of his father's secrets. But for now, he had found the book. The other mysteries would have to wait. I really didn't expect to get sucked into the story of a frog slaying rat, but all of its narrative elements come together really nicely to form a charming world with memorable characters that I was happy to find bloodier and more mature than I thought it'd be. Actually exploring Tales of Iron's world does sometimes get a little repetitive though. The map is really quite large, but it doesn't seem big enough for how many side quests the game offers. Many locations are reused multiple times, and fast travel is just limited enough so that you'll need to get there and back again on foot each time. Most of the side quests are actually requirements of the main plot as well, so every playthrough will require players to keep diving into that same sewer or climbing that same tower over and over again. Additionally, exploring on my own usually didn't seem to pay off, as I was only ever occasionally rewarded, and when I was, it was usually a piece of gear that wasn't even as good as what I already had equipped. Tales of Iron's gameplay is also a huge win though, but it does come with a few cracks. It essentially takes the 2D action platforming formula from games like Hollow Knight and dials down the speed until it plays more like a Souls-like, but without the iframes. For example, there isn't any air combat whatsoever in the game, and movement is restricted based on your total weight, dictated by your currently equipped gear. I found that there was a bit of a learning curve with the controls, as at first they feel a bit unresponsive and sluggish, but over time it became clear that you're definitely given the tools you need to defeat your enemies, even the challenging late game super bosses. There are even a few tricks to making the most of your animations, like quickly alternating between attack and dash buttons to quickly scoot from one side of the map to the other. I'm honestly not sure if this is a bug or a feature, but it helped immensely with highly mobile boss fights and general travel. Combat here is not as nuanced as a true Souls-like game, but there are still several mechanics that make it addicting throughout the campaign. The first is its block parry dodge system. For some powerful attacks, there will be an indicator over an enemy's head letting you know which to do. If you correctly block, parry, or dodge at the right time, it'll open the enemy up for a series of attacks, but missing will generally cost you the majority of your health bar. It can be a really punishing system as some bosses can kill you in only a couple of hits, but every boss has a pretty readable attack pattern. This serves well to create that familiar Souls-like feeling where fights seem impossible when you first face them and you gradually get closer and closer to beating them with each attempt. The other thing that really makes the combat fun is all the different equipment available in the game. Your armor, helmet, and shield can all be different weights and defense ratings, while also offering specific resistances to the four species of enemies, frogs, mozzies, moles, and grubs. At all times, you'll also have a one-handed weapon, a two-handed weapon, and a ranged weapon equipped as well. There are a ton of different items to choose from, but I would have liked to see more overall mechanics involved with the equipment. The weapons don't really seem all that different from one another besides their attack animation between weapon classes, and none of the gear can be upgraded or improved upon. The issue that this creates is that most of the gear will go unused, because something else is just plain better. So most of what I picked up just went straight into my wardrobe never to be used again. You can pick up Tales of Iron when it launches on September 17, 2021 on all systems. It has a simple combat system that really ramps up the difficulty in the later stages to create some memorable and satisfying victories. 
On top of that, it takes place in an expertly crafted world with a really well-told story culminating in a fun and addicting adventure over a dozen or so hour campaign. So I'm valuing Tales of Iron at $23, and what it lacks in longevity and replayability, it more than makes up for in depth of storytelling and fun, challenging combat. I hope you enjoy this review of Tales of Iron. Come see me on Twitch where you can watch our reviews in progress five nights a week. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Until next time, peace.